Aircraft Electrical Systems, Part 1 of 2. The electrical system will be discussed in two parts. First, the basics of circuitry will be introduced. In the second part, the electrical system parts will be combined to show how everything comes together to make a complete system. To gain a basic understanding of the circuitry, the following will be discussed. Electrical circuits, including series circuits and parallel circuits. Next, electricity producers will be introduced, including batteries and alternators. Last, the routing of electricity to the necessary parts via bus bars and switches will be shown. This animation shows a circuit. The two parts of the animation are a real diagram of a circuit on the top left and a visual representation of a circuit on the bottom right. The diagram on the top left shows a battery at the bottom, a switch to the right, and a light bulb at the top. A circuit is a continuous path that allows electricity to flow from one end of the battery or other electrical source through a loop of sorts to the other side. If there is any interruption in the circuit, then the circuit is broken and won't work. For example, if the switch is turned off, the light bulb will turn off. Look at the moving balls on the bottom right. In order for a circuit to work, there must be a source of power. This example uses a battery. A battery has the ability to elevate energy up to a point which is called voltage or pressure. Look at the example of the balls being pulled up the escalator to the top. This is what a battery does. It elevates energy by providing a difference of energy between its positive side and its negative side. Once the balls are at the top, they are free to flow through the paddle wheel on the right side. This causes work to be done, and in this example, causes the light bulb to glow. The balls eventually find their way back to the battery and thus complete the circuit. Notice that there is a switch in the circuit. A switch is a device that can be open or closed. This controls the flow of electricity through the circuit. If the switch is closed, the flow can resume. A circuit must be a continuous path that has a power source and a means of using the energy. A light bulb or other device that consumes electricity is called a load. A series circuit is a circuit with everything connected in a row. If one switch is opened, the entire circuit stops. On the animation, the light bulb is connected in series to the switch. If the light bulb burns out, the circuit stops. If the switch is opened, the circuit also stops. The master switch is in series to the entire electrical system. If there was an electrical fire, the master switch could be turned off to stop the flow of electricity to the entire electrical system. The parallel circuit is used to overcome the problem of having one switch turn off everything. For example, if the radio used a series circuit, then anything else in the circuit would shut off if the radio was shut off. The parallel circuit has more than one path back to the battery. In this example, if the first light bulb is switched off, then it will turn off, but the second light bulb will remain unaffected. The second switch can turn that light off as well. Turning the switch back on in any of these parallel circuits restores the path of electricity in that branch. There is another switch just after the battery. This switch is connected in series to the other two switches. If this switch is turned off, the entire electrical circuit is interrupted and stops. Here is a picture of an aircraft battery. It is a multi-cell battery and has a black cap for each of the cells. These are filled up with an acid that helps form a chemical reaction that allows the battery to store electricity. The main purpose of the battery is to hold energy until it is in an aircraft the battery is mainly used for starting the engine and in the event of an electrical malfunction of the alternator. The battery is then used for backup. A battery must be kept charged, and in an aircraft, 
This is done using the alternator. If the aircraft sits for a long period of time, the battery may discharge to a level which won't allow the engine to start. In this case, the aircraft will usually need to be started with external power or recharged by a mechanic. Should the alternator fail in flight, the battery will have a limited life. A pilot needs to be aware of how long the battery will last in an emergency. It is difficult to impossible to know exactly how long the battery will last, so it is always recommended that the pilot land as soon as practical when the alternator fails. Batteries have a capacity measured in amp hours. For example, if a battery had a capacity of 20 amp hours, then it would be able to produce 1 amp for 20 hours, or any multiple of that, such as 10 amps for 2 hours or 20 amps for 1 hour. The battery life expected is dependent upon what electrical components are in use in the airplane. Determining load and load reduction techniques is discussed further in Part 2. Most aircraft used in training will have an alternator. This slide shows an alternator. In most aircraft, as the engine runs, a flywheel connected to the crankshaft turns. Attached to this flywheel is the alternator belt, which in turn runs the alternator. Barring any system issues, as long as the engine is running, the alternator is producing electricity. Alternators work on the concept of magnetism, like the engine magnetos. The faster they spin, the more electricity is produced. The size of the magnet can be increased, which also increases the alternator's output. If the alternator belt breaks, the alternator will not spin and thus won't be able to produce any output. The battery becomes the sole source of power at this point. An alternator's output depends upon how fast it spins. Most systems can't handle a varied rate. It is necessary to regulate the alternator's output and create a consistent voltage for the radios, lights, and other electrical devices. Too little voltage may not provide enough power for their operation, and too much voltage, or overvoltage, can cause damage. This is a picture of a voltage regulator. Its whole purpose is to keep the alternator output at the desired level. One important function of the regulator is to sense an overvoltage problem. If something happens momentarily in the electrical system that causes the alternator to produce too much output beyond the voltage regulator's capability to regulate it, the regulator will turn the alternator off using an overvoltage relay. Warning systems in the cockpit, such as lights or gauges, should indicate the failure. Usually this situation is temporary and won't recur. Follow the specific aircraft operating handbook when an overvoltage situation occurs. Usually, this includes cycling the alt side of the master switch. It may also include resetting a breaker, but make sure you wait a few minutes to do so in order to keep from damaging the breaker. Cycling the master switch or resetting a breaker causes the overvoltage relay to reset and allows the voltage regulator to return to work. If a failure occurs a second time, leave the alternator off, follow the necessary steps in your POH, and land as soon as practical for repairs. Indicators are installed in the cockpit to alert the pilot to an electrical system malfunction. The two most common types are an ammeter and a load meter. An ammeter shows both the battery output and alternator output. The top picture is an ammeter showing zero. That indicates that the alternator and the battery are not producing electricity. This is what an ammeter will show when the aircraft's electrical system is not on. When the alternator is producing output, the needle will trend to the right. The amount of deflection is dependent upon how much output the alternator is producing. After an engine start, the alternator must recharge the battery power drained during start. The ammeter will show a strong deflection to the right. As the battery recharges, the needle will get closer and closer to zero. 
If the alternator stops producing output, the ammeter needle will trend to the left. This indicates that the alternator is not supplying enough or any power and the battery is taking over. The needle's amount of deflection to the left indicates how much of the power the battery is carrying. On some systems, such as a Cessna 172, there is a low or high voltage light that alerts the pilot that a malfunction has occurred. The bottom picture is a load meter. Load meters show only the alternator's output and show nothing about the battery. This is why load meters start at zero amperes and don't have a negative scale like the ammeter. If the alternator fails, the load meter indicates zero. This is a common indicator on Piper aircraft. Within the aircraft's electrical system, there will be one or more bus bars. A bus bar is a solid metal piece that allows connections from many places. Look at the image in this slide and try to imagine all of those wires having to be twisted together. It would be impossible and dangerous. Connecting them to a common metal bar is the solution to a connection area with many wires coming together. Switches allow the pilot to control when and where the electricity flows. The aircraft panel has switches to turn on lights, radios, transponders, and other pilot-controlled systems. The master switch is a two-part switch which allows the pilot to control the battery and alternator separately. The key switch is used to start the airplane, select the magnetos, and turn the ignition system off. This is the end of this lesson.